In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a student survey using Google Forms. A Google Forms student survey is a really easy way to get feedback from your students and then be able to see a clear, organized breakdown of the results. Once you learn how to make a Google Forms survey, you can also give them to teachers after professional development, or if you need to get feedback from lots of different teachers about student goals, you can also use surveys for that purpose. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. If you like the tips that I share in this video, you can show your appreciation by sharing it with other teachers that you know, hitting the like button, and subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly video updates. Let's start by looking at a Google Form survey that I had my students fill in just a couple weeks ago. On this survey, I wanted to know more about my students' experience with distance learning to make sure I was getting some feedback from them about how to improve my practices and make their learning experience a little bit better for the last month of school. You can see that I've asked a question that they would rate on a scale of one to five. And then the rest of the questions that I asked about the types of improvements they would like to see are just quick, short answer responses. After a student is finished taking this survey, they'll hit the submit button at the bottom. And then you'll see on the teacher end that I'm able to see the exact number of responses that I've gotten from my students. Here you'll see that I'm able to get a summary of all their responses in one place. Since I chose to collect the email addresses of the respondents, I'm able to see quickly who responded to the survey. Then for the question with a numerical response, I can see a breakdown of how students responded in a bar graph. And next you'll see their responses to the short answer questions that I asked all in one place so that it's easy to read and review. You can also look at a question breakdown here you can select a specific question, and then below you can see how students responded just to that question. You can also choose to look at an individual student report to see how a particular student responded to the questions that you asked. If you've already reviewed the results but think you might get some survey responses trickling in, you can also choose to get an email notification when new survey responses are recorded. The last way to view all the survey responses is to generate a Google Sheets to see all the answers to your questions in one place. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at how to create a survey using Google Forms. On the Google Forms homepage, you'll notice that there are lots of different templates that you can work from, or you can just go ahead and start with a blank document. The first thing you'll want to do is give your survey a name and then write a short description. You'll see if you click on the name of the document at the top, that it will automatically convert the name of the document to the name you gave your survey. In order to add new questions, go up to add question. The first thing I'm going to do is have students enter their email. You're going to see throughout this tutorial that Google Forms does a pretty good job anticipating what you're trying to do. So if you type your email, it's going to automatically prompt you to ask if you want to set it up so that it collects email responses with the survey results. I do like to select this option so that I'm able to see which of my students actually submitted a survey. And then I'm also able to easily see how each individual student responded. There are some cases where I just give a totally anonymous survey because I want students to feel safe to be able to give me candid feedback. So in that case, I would not collect emails with the survey responses. To start building my survey, I'm going to go ahead and go up and add another question. You'll see that the default question type is multiple choice, but that it will also adjust based on how Google interprets the question that you're asking. So the first question I want to ask my students is how difficult has the work been so far for distance learning? And you'll notice that Google has already interpreted that I might want to be using a linear numerical scale for this type of question. And then you'll see below that you're able to label the numbers so that students understand what the scale represents. At the bottom, you'll notice that the default setting is that specific questions are not required. If you want students to have to answer the question, in order to submit the survey, you need to turn on the required button. I'm going to add another question, and here I'm going to ask my students what suggestions they have for their teacher to improve their experience for the last month of school. You'll notice that Google interpreted that rather than a multiple choice question, that I probably want students to respond in paragraph form to this question. Just like the last question, I'll make this a required question as well. If you wanted to ask your students to choose from a limited range of choices, you could pick a multiple choice question. And if you want students to be able to select multiple answers, 
then you would want to use the checkboxes. You'll notice at the bottom of the question that you're given an option to duplicate the question. This would be a helpful function if you had lots of similar types of questions. And then if you decide you want to delete one of the questions, just hit the trash can and the question will be deleted. You can also rearrange the order of the questions by simply clicking on them and dragging the question wherever you want it to go. If you want to customize this survey and make it a little bit more personalized and interesting, go up to the paint palette at the top of the screen, and there you'll be given some different options for how you could customize your survey. You'll notice under theme options that you can change the image header. You can either pick from one of the default pictures that they have, or you can upload your own photo. Then you can also change the theme color, the background color, as well as the font style. And before you push out the survey, it's a good idea to preview it first. So now let's take a look at some of the different settings options for this survey. You'll notice since I already chose with that first question to have emails collected, that the box to collect emails is already checked. If you click on the next option, it will give students a response receipt after they finish their survey. I do usually like to check the box to limit survey responses to only one response. And then I typically leave the bottom two boxes unchecked for students to be able to edit their responses after they've submitted them or see the responses from other students. But of course, there might be some circumstances where it would make sense for students to be able to see how the rest of their classmates responded. The presentation options are really more applicable when you're creating a Google Forms quiz, but I am going to go ahead and add my own confirmation message that students will get after they finish taking the survey. When you're ready to assign this survey, go up to the send button at the top. There you'll see that you're given an option to add a collaborator. So if you wanted to share this survey with another teacher, you could enter their email and they could also be a co-owner of this survey with you. This can be useful if you share students and you want other teachers to be able to see the way that students responded to the survey that you gave them. Then you'll see that there are really two ways that you can assign this survey. One option for sending out the survey is that you email your students directly. I personally use the link function most frequently. Here, I just copy the link, and then I might create an assignment in Google Classroom and just add the link as part of that assignment. I hope you learned how easy it is to use Google Forms to make a student survey, as well as how to organize the results so that they're really easy to read and interpret. If you have any questions or suggestions about using Google Forms surveys in schools, please comment below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found the tips that I shared helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. You can also check out some of the other tutorials I have on my channel by clicking on one of those two videos above. And if you're interested in downloading any of the resources that I've created and show on my videos, please visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. Lastly, if you want to check me out on social media, my Twitter handle, Facebook page, and Pinterest account are all in the description below. Thanks so much and have a great week.